Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all. And uh, uh, Mr. Robinson, the efforts have been talked about about trying to stem the precursors from China to Mexico. And everyone I know has raised, is there any other insights that you can share that you haven't shared already the committee about our efforts to stop this? China did respond when we pushed them hard on the direct sending of uh, fentanyl into the United States. How do we now accomplish shutting them down on the precursors? Well, uh, as, I said, um, as, I, as I said earlier, we are going to continue to try to engage uh, with the PRC on this issue. But the fact is, because this is a global uh, uh, problem, other countries are engaging the uh, PRC on this issue. Uh, we have had uh, positive engagements with, uh, with India, with Pakistan, with uh, uh, Mexico, uh, with Canada. All of them have also uh, pushed uh, the PRC to do more uh, to, to monitor the precursors leaving uh, uh, China. Okay, I'm just, thank you very much. And, and I know you're pushing on this. It's a piece that seems so critical if we're going to stop the, the, the flow if, or reduce it greatly. Uh, and uh, I, th I think we've already heard some comments about some other countries are starting to send precursors as well. So it's, it's a, a world uh, challenge, but that's the biggest piece at the moment. Um, I'll tell you, every I've had uh, now 19 town halls uh, this year in Oregon, 19 of the 36 counties. I do a town hall in every county. This issue comes up everywhere. There are parents in every county who have lost their brothers, their sisters, their spouses, their children uh, to uh, the contamination uh, from fentanyl. And uh, that's just a, a, just a horrific uh, impact uh, on America. And I know that all of you are doing the, the, the best you can. And, and I think the whole bipartisan effort here is to say, yes, keep going. We support you. How can we help you more? I, Administrator Milgram, at the board, I had statistics from the U.S. Sentencing Commission, and I just wanted to see if they fit what you have from the DEA. And they say that the, from 2016 to 2021, the five-year average was that 90% of the, the fentanyl uh, seized was from border crossings uh, and uh, interior vehicle checkpoints. Does that fit your understanding? Senator, we, we at DEA, we don't have the specific information that CBP or Border Patrol would have. So I, I could, we could ask the Department of Homeland Security and get back to you. Okay, because I, th I think under, understanding the dynamics, right, of where the drugs are coming, and we've heard reference to the fact, uh, uh, Dr. Gupta, you were referring to the fact that the cartels want to move it fast in, in what, in that the fast and most efficient way seems to be through border crossings. And that statistic seems to, seems to back that up. But the other thing that I found very surprising was according to the same stats from the Sentencing Commission, that 91% of those seizures at the border are from US citizens. And so I also just wanted to ask if you're familiar with that, that stat and if you consider it accurate. Senator, uh, again, DEA is not responsible for the border or the border patrol, but I'm no, happy I to No, I sure ask. understand that, yes. but in drug enforcement, you want to understand the issue, and these are basic fundamental facts about the drug flow, so. What we see, Senator, we see, um, we see basically, we see Americans and we see Mexicans and we see people, um, we interdict, we interdict many, we're not responsible for the border. So when we're doing investigations, we're generally doing them in the United States. And yes, we are making seizures okay. of Americans as well as Mexican Dr. Nationals. Gupta, that 90%, that, that is, is, that, is that accurate that most of the drug seizures are actually from U.S. citizens crossing? Uh, Senator, I, kind of, I cannot watch to the exact number, but the fact is that there's a lot of people that cross the border every day just a matter of work, going to work, going to, and those people wittingly or unwittingly often end up. And that's why, but there's still ports of entry that they're entering through. Okay, I'm, I'm surprised that given our effort to understand the challenge that neither of you kind of have the firm grip on the dynamics at the border. So I just want to encourage you to expand your horizon to understanding those, those pieces because they're such an important part of the conversation. Uh, I wanted to turn to the social media uh, challenge. And um, uh, so 
is it basically that uh, our youth are finding contacts through social media and then those contacts have a supply chain where they hand deliver to the door? Or how does that work? Uh, we, we see a number of different things on social media, Senator, in our work. One of the things we see are, for example, the cartels recruiting couriers or others to sell narcotics in the United States. We also see many instances that are exactly as you describe, where you have someone who's on social media and within three or four clicks will connect with someone selling often what we see are fake pills. They're meant to look exactly like they were oxycodone, but they're fentanyl and filler. And that the, those pills are then delivered to their home or their office or their front door um, by someone that they don't know within you know, often minutes or hours. Thank you. My time's up. I really appreciate you all doing everything you can to tackle this in incredibly horrific uh, challenge decimating America's families. Senator Young.